<laughs> so I'm just looking at the chat and we've got lots of people joining us. So um, we're up to about 19 people so far. So it's lovely to see you all. Oh, wonderful. How is it with you this morning, Sharon? It's all good. I have been uh, busy teaching and I have actually, it's, isn't it really funny when you get into particular ideas, which is of course what this webinar is all about, it's ideas for using rhythm flashcards and you get so absorbed in it. So I've been teaching this morning and I've been using these ideas. <laughs> So I've been having a lovely morning teaching. Oh, what about you, Hannah? Yes, I have. So, and uh, Sally's joining us too. Hello, Sally. Hello. Can you hear us? Hannah, hello. hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Hello. 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 How are we all this wonderful Monday morning? <laughs> Afternoon? Evening? Yes. I think uh, wherever you are in the world, you are in the world. <laughs> most people are seeming to say they're from the UK at the moment, but. Um, do let us know if you're not actually so it would be lovely to hear Still from you too. early in america you know yeah. east coast you're five hours mm. behind so you're doing well you're up at eight o'clock and joining us on the webinar the other side the the west coast pacific you're i think seven or eight eight hours i think it is isn't it so that would be very dedicated at the five o'clock early start so if you're joining us on <laughs> And you are from that area. I can't say I blame you for not joining us at five o'clock. Oh, wow. Melissa says she's shoveling out of many inches of snow already this morning. Wow. <laughs> Where I'm are you? pretty sure, Melissa, you're yeah. somewhere in the States. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm right. Thinking that. I can't think Ohio. Of she's in Ohio. 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 Oh, oh. I shall be there this summer. I'm just about to book my flights. And Hannah will hopefully be with me as well. So we're Very getting quite excited about oh, yes. being at the Ohio University um, wow. Piano Pedagogy Conference Seminar. Yeah, the seminar. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I'm really excited. So, oh, so, snow. Mm. So, Sa um, Sally and Sharon, would you like to tell us a little bit about just as people are, be are joining us? We're, we've got about 30 people with us at the moment. Would you like to um, just share a little bit about what you're going to be talking about just by way of a, a kind of introduction? Sharon? Yes, over to me. Perfect. Okay, well, I've just been saying how excited I've been getting as, as Sally and I do when we are in this mode of creating. We use it in our teaching. Um, and so I have been exploring all of these um, lovely new flashcards that we have had created, especially for um, they're all available inside this month's curiosity box, which is, of course, the area that is dedicated to our members. And on this call today, we are going to be looking at seven practical ideas for using flashcards, because if you were anything like me a few years ago, probably a good few years ago, um, I would have had flashcards, but it's like, so what am I supposed to do with them? How can I use them? And there are umpteen number of ways that we can use them. And this is what Sally and I are going to be diving into today. Sally. Yeah. I think, you know, this, this idea of what do you do with the flashcards, it's, it's, it can be difficult sometimes. Sometimes ideas just appear, don't they, as you're in the flow of teaching. But other times um, you can kind of think, as Sharon says, oh, I've got all these flashcards. We haven't actually counted up how many flashcards we've done this, for this curiosity box. But I do know I spent, um, not yesterday, but the, the previous Sunday, cutting out, laminating what seemed like hundreds of them because we've got a whole set of color coded 44 and a whole set of color coded 34 cards going all the way from the simple sort of 44 crotchets and quavers you know quarter notes and eighth notes and uh, half notes going all the way through to our purple yes our purple set then we have semi quavers and we also have a pink set which has got dotted ones look at us both join the and who can get the green set up the quickest? I can. There we go. We've got the green got set, them. which are the triplets. And we've got those as well in the three, four. So I had a lovely morning watching Anna Green Gables on Netflix and doing uh -huh. all my laminating. And um, although I know we're all trying to cut down on the amount of laminating that we're doing, you know, thinking about the planet, nevertheless, I, I laminated them because I think that way they will continue to be used for many, many years to come. You know, they've actually mm -hmm. made a really quite uh, useful resource like this that I think will be long lasting. And I can quite easily see me using these um, 
you know, yeah. for, for 10 years plus. So I, I think that's definitely well worth it. However, you know, why is it important? We, and as Sharon said, we got very excited. We were talking about this on Friday. Why is it important to uh, use flashcards in, in, in our teaching? Why are they really an essential tool? And I think one of the things that's come out of this particular curiosity box, which is about rhythm, sim simple time rhythm in particular, is the importance of rhythm, how it underpins everything. You know, rhythm is flow. That's what the word means. That's the root of the word where it comes from. And uh, life is flow. We are in flow. And if we are in flow with life, then we know life feels really, really easy. Um, you know, there is, there is rhythm all around us. The moon has a rhythm, the sun has a rhythm, the earth has a rhythm. It is part and fundamental in nature that rhythm is there. So when it comes to actually learning to play an instrument, rhythm has to be at the heart of the learning. And it is more important, I believe, than pitch. More important than pitch. As a second study viola player, I know when I'm sight reading my way through Marla One, for example, which I was doing quite recently, um, I can't play half the notes, <laughs> but I tend to just try and keep going with the rhythm of the orchestra because I know, you know, the notes will fall off, but as long as I stick with my rhythm, I'll get to the end. And my husband said to me recently at the last concert, Sally, you've got to stop counting because seemingly I sit there because I lead the violas for my sins. But um, I sit there going, one. <laughs> so I can absolutely concentrate and keep myself in exactly the right place. So um, as pianists... But Sally, it's one of those... I was just about to say, it's one of those things as pianists, because we don't get the same opportunities that, you know kids who play in, in, in school orchestras and so on and so forth. It's something that can really lag behind. Mm, it, it really can. And as teachers, um, we have to recognise that and we have to actually put the rhythm work at the heart, I think, of the learning and of the lessons. And that's where flashcards come in useful because they help to isolate um, rhythm away from pitch because as long as pitch is there pitch is kind of like the i'm going to i'm going to dominate this situation here we're just going to look at the names and the notes and rhythm kind of gets left behind you know um so flashcards are brilliant because they help you to isolate that rhythm and um from all the other elements that exist um and it also helps to lift the learning i don't know whether you find this sharon lift the learning off the page and probably away from the piano as well so that mm. you're not you know th this can be quite magnetic can't it the the keyboard and uh, as long as it's there we always want to play it take a rhythm card put it on the floor you know uh, later on this afternoon i shall be creating quite a mess over here um with my students i'll have rhythm cards everywhere and um you know we'll do some rhythm work away from the piano sharon mm. any th other thoughts yeah, yeah. on why they're an essential tool for us? Well, I mean, it, it, just like what you said there, Sally, it's, it's the importance of just taking it away from the whole complexity that exists when we're getting students to just, as I think what happens, I remember it happened to me as a piano student, where you're just completely overloaded because you're trying, as Sally has said, to figure out not only the right notes, but the right fingering and move around the keyboard geography. So that is where, um, it, it does become really, really quite, um, quite, quite tricky. Um, so, yes. Yeah. Lovely. So, yeah, I think, I think, sorry, Hannah, just before we, we, you, you come back in, you know, I think the other thing about separating the rhythm out is that the students can then see how rhythm connects everything else to it. You know, if you think of rhythm as being the central core and the notes, the, 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 the fingering, the dynamics, they all happen within the rhythm. Without really secure rhythm, there isn't quite that sense of um, being really connected to the music, I think. Sorry, Hannah. Over no, to I, was, I was just going to hand over, actually, and just say, um, I, I'm going to turn my video off in a minute and let you, let you kick off. Um, but just before I do, I just wanted to give a final welcome to a couple of people who've just joined us. So Jane Mitchell, lovely to see you. Marianne Gaspar, 
um, Maggie Witten, um, hello. Also, if you're joining us for the first time at a Curious webinar, could you let, let us know in the comments because we'd love to give you a special hello and um, just welcome you properly. So if this is your first experience of the Curious Piano Teachers, then a massive welcome to you. Um, we hope you enjoy today and um, we hope you take away some practical tips that you're gonna use in your lessons. And with that, I'm gonna stop my video and hand over to Sally and Sharon. Uh -huh. we've got, Wonderful. I see we've got thank you. Katie oh, just had her first ever webinar. Hello, Katie. I hope you're enjoying it. You're so <laughs> and Lynette as well. And lots of people who are on their first ever webinar. Oh, well, I hope you'll wonderful. come back and join us again because they're always a lot of fun, these webinars, aren't they, Sharon? They are. And especially when people join us live. We keep saying this. Yeah, you do get the replay. You can watch it again. But it's just so much more fun when you're actually um, on, on live with us. Lovely. So... Um, we're going to start and have a look at these uh, seven games then that we we might use, we have used. Um, and uh, I think uh, for me, let's go with game number one, the very first one. And that is, this is something I used to do when I was a classroom teacher, and I still do it today, is that if there is a particular rhythmic element that I'm working on with a student, then I will take four flashcards that have that element in it. So for example, I've, here's some I've got ready earlier. Um, I've been working with uh, a lot of students on uh, dotted crotchets and quavers. That's uh, dotted quarter note and eighth notes. And I've got the relevant flashcards here. I'm not sure whether you're seeing those backwards or not, but my apologies, I can't reverse my screen. And also we've been working on syncopation or syncopa, yeah? Um, two, two particular rhythmic elements. And of course, this is working from the idea that our teaching is concept-led. And that's something that we are really doing a lot of in the, in the Curious Piano Teachers, based on the piano framework, which is why the colour is there, um, that we do concept-led teaching rather than repertoire-led teaching. And I might tell you more about that as we go on. But let's first of all start with this, these rhythm flashcards. I've, I've picked four of them. The students already know these rhythms. We've already I've introduced them to them. They know either how to count them, um, either using metrical counting, which would be one and two and three, four and, yeah. Or if you use rhythm language, it could be syncopatati. Syncopatati. And we can talk more about counting maybe as we, as we go on. Um, so they've got four cards here and I would have done those same four cards in the previous lesson and then when they arrive they'll see that those four cards are at various points around my room that I teach in. Yeah. And I'll tell them to have a look at the cards. I'll tell them to have a think about them, maybe tap them very quietly and say the rhythm language. And then I'll play one of those rhythms to them. I'll play one of those rhythms. It's up to me whether I decide I'm going to play it on the piano. I might play it on one of my little chime bars here, you know, my bells. So if I was doing this one, this is this one, for example, um, I would play this. And the idea is the student would go as quickly as they possibly can to stand by that rhythm card. They'd clap that rhythm card and they'd say it. So I would go, off I go. And I might do it again, especially if they look a bit puzzled. Yeah, and then they go to the card, fingers crossed, because it gives me evidence that they know what they've, the, their learning has taken place. And then without saying anything, I might go on to the next one. Off I go. Oh, I had to think about that one myself. And I do it again. Take it off. Yeah. And I cover all four cards, making sure that they were going to the right card. And if they didn't go, if they went to a wrong card, then I would just repeat my rhythm over and over again until they actually looked around. You can see them looking, you can see the thinking going on and you might encourage them by saying, can you tap it and say it? Can you tap and say what I'm doing? Picture what it looks like, yeah? So that's a lot of fun and it's just a very quick game, starting off the lesson, just consolidating the learning that might have happened in the previous few weeks. Okay, Sharon, over to you. Wonderful, love that Sally. And I, I do think um, <clears throat> it's something I'm gonna just reiterate here. 
that um, in, inside the community, we do work on this um, concept and skill-based learning. It's not a case of just happening to meet a rhythm and not really get to know its name and find out more about it and, and meeting it time and time again so that we become familiar with these rhythm patterns. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's so important. So, okay, here is rhythm flashcard ID number two. And it's something called, I've just called it knock knock. And the idea is that we put a flashcard, something maybe as simple as this, um, on your studio door. I don't know whether or not your students kind of enter um, automatically through your front door um, and whether you have a little waiting area outside. But the idea is that, again, it's a rhythm that you know they should be familiar with, um, that they should be familiar with, and they are going to knock in order to get in. All right, so in this case, we have got All right, and there could be, this is one, as Sally has already said, we have our rhythms color-coded um, so that there's an understanding of the, the easier ones gradually becoming a little bit more difficult. Uh, something that I'm just about to put inside the, uh, the resources inside the community is something that I do that's called, fruit, I just call it fruit rhythms. It's not my idea personally. For those of you who know June Armstrong, the composer, this originally um, came from her. She used to be my teacher. And she had this wonderful way for students who struggle to subdivide rhythms. So, for example, what we've got here is we can say apple, apple, watermelon, pear. So pear, crotchet, um, one syllable, uh, two quavers, uh, apple, um, watermelon, uh, all different sorts of combinations. Let's say you've got uh, two semi-quavers and a quaver, oranges, oranges. Reverse it, a quaver and two semi-quavers, blueberry, blueberry. So let's say my student, I am expecting them to be familiar with this rhythm. I put it on the door and they have got to knock. Okay, so that is what you can do with your flashcards, um, idea number two. And I'm also going to go on and, sorry, Sally, you were going to say something there. I just love that idea. I just love that idea. So all my students are going to do that this afternoon. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking about the three, four, one because I'm, and in fact, I'm going to, I've got some students who are working in three, four, which is always a harder, slight, well, it's slightly less, um, well used I think 3-4 you know I'm not saying that we never play in 3-4 because actually we play quite a lot in 3-4 but beginner pieces tend to be more in 4-4 I think um, I think I would use two flashcards for the 3-4 because otherwise it, it doesn't really quite find a flow in just with just one bar of 3-4 yeah 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 and as well I, I would ideally probably if you were doing, let's say, two cards, yeah. I would be inclined to do that order yeah. rather than the other way around. So that I'm getting to finish as the way a phrase would with, with that, that longer note. Okay, so here's another idea. I have been experimenting and exploring this in my teaching even a little bit more this morning. And it is this. Now, you need a couple of things. I know that Sally has a floor spots. I've got something that kind of looks the same, but of course you can, you can be as inventive as you like. Uh, these are actually just children's plates. Okay. And what I'm going to do so that I'm not going to have to go down onto the floor is I'm going to do this. So what Hopefully everyone can see that okay. And if I do this, I'm going to move this back. And let's use this same rhythm. And I'm working, I'm going to work from your way. So this is going to be over here. This is beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four. And this is the, the chance that children um, and adults get to actually see how they get to have this visual sense of rhythm, which I think is actually really important. You can see here, I've got a, a box of little erasers. And 
this is this is something I called uh, rubber rhythms and the student is going to recreate the flashcard rhythm using as I said it can be floor spots it can be plates it can be anything you like and these little rubbers so if I move this here we've got two quavers so I'm going to pop over to the edge and you can just notice how I'm actually placing these okay so I'm not putting them like this it's the fact that the bar will start here and I'm going to just put it there and then I'm going to do the same thing this is beat number two if you know us at the Curious Piano Teachers you will know that we love cake so <laughs> hence what we've got here okay this is the beat where we have four Semi-quavers, so there we go. And then we finish with a crotchet. And I'm going to- Or a quarter note. So or we'll a quarter note. note indeed, for those of you who are based in America. And there we go. And then of course, getting the student um, to, to tap that and say that rhythmically. So that's another idea. And what you can then do is, we can put this away and we can do this and then they have to go and write it. Okay, so that is rubber rhythms and what you can do with those little rubbers, those erasers. Eraser rhythms, I think probably we'd have to call them. Maybe. <laughs> We refer to them as rubbers here. <laughs> Maybe that's an Irish thing. No, it's, <laughs> yes, a British, it's a British rhythm. thing as well, but I know it's not an American <laughs> thing. So we'll call it eraser rhythms. Okay. Um, love. I love that, Sharon. And as Sharon said, I've got floor spots, which are just down here. I'm going to go and pick them up, actually. And um, I'm just going to add one other little idea to that. It's just popped into my head. One moment, please. Okay. So, so I'm got just going to say, keep... Keep your, keep your ideas yes, and yes. questions coming in the chat because Hannah will pick those up. Yes, do, do keep talking. And if you've got questions, please just pop down any questions that you've got, mm. things that occur to you. Oh, could you just explain that a bit more? You know, So I have these floor spots that go on the floor um, and do exactly the same as, as Sharon's done. But uh, another way that you can get students to write rhythms is to use lollipop sticks. Yeah. So um, that they're, they're a lot of fun and the kids really, really like doing them. So it's just a lollipop stick and, you know, there's, that's a crotchet, that's a quarter note um, and an eighth note. I'm not sure I can do that and hold them at the same time. There you go. There's, a, there's an eighth note. Yeah. And rests work very well as well, because you'll notice what we've done here is we haven't got mm. a fancy rest, but actually we've just got a Z. And... Um, because we we use i'm a kadai trained teacher and, and sharon uses a lot of the kadai uh, approach in her lessons as well and that's how we will write a quarter note a crotchet rest and of course you can do that very beautifully with uh with these as well i'm not sure i can but is that yeah, backwards so anyhow you get you um, get the idea you get the idea, yeah, that's lovely. And the, the other thing is that I like that when we use that Z um, as a basic rest, when you actually go to write it, it's, as, as, the, as the proper notated version, it's a sideways Z on a little sloping C. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it links yeah. in into yeah. um, helping students to draw that. And I think we should just talk for a moment or two, Sharon, about uh, what's going on here why we're doing the manipulation with the with those erasers you know why we're asking our students to uh to write this um i mean for example i had a a, a musicianship class a couple of weeks ago at the start of term uh, i've got a little six-year-old um who is is making very steady let's say progress not anywhere near anyhow very steady progress and i get her to write uh, a t t t t ta ta rhythm and of course what she writes is t t t t t t t t ta ta yeah so she she sees 
this rhythm, let me just get this one here, she sees that, the quavers, the eighth notes, as a T in itself, rather than a TT, rather than two different sounds. So we end up with um, eight TTs going along there. Now, that is very common, yeah? The children do not understand that this is a single quaver and this is a single quaver. And as soon as you start to talk about it and uh, go, this is half and this is half, it becomes so complicated. Um, but unless I had got her to write that down, I have no proof of whether she understands it or not. So really what we're doing here is we're looking for proof of learning because if there isn't proof of learning, which there clearly wasn't, then I have to go back and rethink that and think, uh, okay, so what can I do next week to reinforce this understanding of the, how many eighth notes quavers there are in one single uh, crotchet quarter note beat? Yeah. So it is yeah. really important that, isn't it, Sharon, we find? <clears throat> and I'm just, I'm just looking at um, a question here from Christy. He says, I already own many rhythm flashcards with note or, yes, with note heads on the notes. How important is it to use the Kadai notation without the note heads? Um, that's a really good point. I mean, one of the reasons I really like it is when you're doing dictation. And I don't know if you've ever, you know, noticed if, if you're getting them to, to, to actually draw the, the note heads, it can take ages. So it's super quick. But I think the other thing is that once we have got a, a blob, if we call it that, that then belongs on the stave, yes. which yeah. relates to pitch notation. Yeah. So when we're just focusing purely on this rhythm, which is what we're saying, it's great. We want to be able to take things away so that so our students are not having to think about pitch, are not having to think about all those other things. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely with you there. In fact, you know, the, the, the wonderful Michael Stocks, who, who sadly passed away recently, you know, was, was great on this because he said exactly what you did, that the, the, that the note head actually puts the note on the stave somewhere. Yeah, so that's to do with the pitch. The note head is to do with the pitch. Just the stems by themselves take away any extra stuff and um, just really focus us on the rhythm. It's fine though, if you've got a set with note heads, it's really not a problem. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, our first set that we did for um, something called Let's Play, it actually does have the note heads there, but we decided this particular time, we're gonna take those note heads off and just leave them as, as the sticks themselves. Cause it just reduces the um, amount of things in the process, I think. And just to quickly answer Fiona's question about how do you show a minimum, you just, you do have it like a minimum. But there actually, yes. There we go. Yeah, you do, you do put a minimum on there. Yeah, you do put a minimum on there. Um, so thank you for asking that question. So we're gonna go on now to the, to the fourth um, flashcard game. Now, flashcard games aren't just for beginners. They aren't just for children. They aren't just for elementary students. Um, they can also be used all the way through as uh, challenges, brain challenges, um, as uh, making things more complicated uh, when it might be otherwise a little bit easy. So I'm going to demonstrate this by um, suggesting that um, if you've got a student, an advanced student who's learning a piece of music and uh, they're working on it hands separately because of course you know a lot of work has to go on hands separately that you can add um, some flashcard work as ostinati yeah so that the student gets to play one hand and has to tap an ostinato rhythm with the other hand so what does that do it kind of overloads the brain <laughs> um, and it also eventually makes the right hand which or let's say that's doing the uh, the actual piano work you know it's helping it to become much more automated because the brain cannot do two things at the same time don't believe that you know women are better at multitasking there's no such thing we cannot do two things at the same time what we do is we all automate one skill and whilst we continue to have to think about a second skill Okay, so that's what's happening here. So let's take, for example, um, a Beethoven 
first movement of his sonata in G, and I'm hoping you'll probably be able to hear this, even though I don't have, um, <clears throat> even though um, I've got my headphones in. Tell me, Sharon, if you can't. And here we've got um, a passage for the right hand, all quavers, and. Yeah, it's a, just this long passage of Quavers and actually just played by itself, it could get a little, mm, you think, oh, well, that's it. I know how to do that. But actually, do you? Uh, this is where the flashcards come in. So that's in three, four. And you might say to a student, OK, could you play that again? But whilst you do that, I want you to tap this rhythm with your left hand. So you ready? I'm going to get that going first. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, and then immediately my brain has got something else to think about. Yeah, and then if they manage that, you say, okay, so this time um, I'd like you to tap this rhythm as an ostinato. Okay, so it's the thing about challenges is that your brain loves the challenge, okay? Loves the challenge. And here you can play the right hand fine, yeah? Add the challenge of the first rhythm card. Brain had to think for a little moment and some little places were harder than others, but it got that. That wasn't too hard because I had a rest at the end. Let's see how it does with this. I've changed the rhythm. One. Oh, I'm going to get that going. Two, three, one, two. You see, I didn't get the first one right because actually trying to keep that rhythm going all the way through and not stopping on the second beat, but keeping going through to the third beat, that's really quite hard. And I have to say, I did have a sneaky practice before that. <laughs> of that one so flashcards rhythm flashcards are not just for your beginner pupils for your child pupils you know they can be used really purposefully and in with intent really quite for a, a long long time all the way up to advanced level as a way of raising the challenge level all the time and of course you can do it yourself which is always fun sharon are we stopping okay. now for a moment? I think we are. We are indeed. It's been, <laughs> I've just been having a look through, um, uh, through the comments and um, we are going to, I think we'll get Hannah back on again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. So you've, you've, hi, Hannah. You've Hello. had four of our Rhythm Flashcard games and we've got another three to go. But uh, we're going to have a little intermission now. So if you've got any questions, pop those questions down. But I know... Uh, Hi, Hannah. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. That was absolutely fantastic. And I'm, we're looking forward to the other three as well. Um, but I just wanted to say hi um, to those of you who are brand new. Um, and um, just if this is your first experience of the Curious Piano Teachers, we hope you're enjoying it. Um, but we also just want to share a little bit more about who we are, what we do, um, and um, how you can benefit from being a member. Um, so we are all about providing teachers like you with opportunity and resources to develop your teaching and your playing skills and fill in any gaps in your knowledge. Um, so we are um, all about connecting. Um, we're all about um, growing your confidence and we're all about education. So the connection is, is kind of where I come in, in the sense that um, I am your community manager and um, I will... Um, manage the Facebook group, um, I send out your weekly update, I let you know everything that's going on. So you'll be able to see on the slide right now, you can see a little snapshot. This was actually last Friday. This was... This is actually a picture of me, believe it or not. This is one of my pupils drew this and it was the moment of my week because she had um, uh, pl uh, 
playtime that was too wet for them to go outside at school and I was teaching her at school mm. and um, she drew this picture of me and it just it just gladdened my heart so um but yeah there's there's you know there are lots of these lovely moments that we have as teachers and it's good to celebrate the things that go well I mean sometimes they are kind of more specific musical wins that we've had you know we might have been pers persevering mm. with people in, with a concept they've been struggling to get for a long time or a um you know, uh, performance that's gone really well, but it might not be, it might be just the little things. It could be just that they've struggling, been struggling with this thing and they've broken through, or you've tried something new and it worked. Um, it, it, it's great. It's good to celebrate our achievements like that. So um, the lounge is a lovely place like that. It's, it's a very kind of safe place where people can share, they can ask questions. There's no, I think we were, we were talking this morning about to a new member and we were saying that there is really genuinely no question too small mm. that you can ask. Mm. People will not, you know, will not mind. And in fact, we love helping each other in the lounge. And you, we, you know, whether you're experienced, you've got many years of teaching experience behind you, or you're brand new to it, you will always learn something. And I, I think, you know, we, we all kind of think that makes us... And yeah. I, I think it's so important, that connection, isn't it? Because yeah. it, we can be really, really isolated as, as right. piano teachers. And, you know, the fact that we all, you know, plunge into the curiosity lounge, as it's called, and uh, have a chat. If you've got a problem, you put your problem in there and mm, you get all sorts of different ideas. And, and I met a teacher recently, actually, who, who has joined us and quite new to teaching. And uh, she was saying she just didn't know. She was floundering around as she started to, to teach. And then she came across us, I think it was on Facebook, and, and joined. She said, oh, you're my life saviour, <laughs> because she'd found the, 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 the advice, um, the, the, the interaction so helpful. <laughs> and she didn't feel alone any longer. And I certainly don't feel alone, because I know I could do otherwise. Um, mm. So, yeah, and, and Hannah is a big, big part of that in the way that she brings people together and uh, helps us all to have a good time and eat cake and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we meet in person too don't we and what's the lovely sometimes thing sometimes we meet in person we do i mean yeah, they, yeah we do yeah. there are groups that kind of start you know there was there was a lovely one in salisbury a few a few months ago where a few members had kind of found each other in the group um, maybe knew each other from outside but they're all curious kind of teachers yeah met yep. together and very kindly had me along so I think it's nice that what happens in the lounge does kind of translate into real life as well yep. so yeah and really as nice. I've, I said at the beginning Hannah and I are heading off over to the states in the in June as we're going to be at the University of Ohio by the invitation of Dr Christopher Fisher I'm going to be giving some presentations there so we'd love to see you um, meet mm -hmm. some of you there at the conference that they're holding at the University of Ohio um, and I think, you know, one of the other really strong things about uh, being a member of our community is the way that teachers get more confidence uh, uh, in their teaching just from sharing the ideas and, and some of the, um, uh, the, the resources that we offer. I mean, something that is particularly dear to my heart, I've already mentioned, I think, which is this piano framework. Now, when I did my PhD, um, about five six years ago I realized that actually you know it's very hard to pin down what it is we do at each individual stage and how do you know what a student knows and what they don't know so I worked along with um, Graham Fitch uh, on the advanced level at this thing called the piano framework and this has broken down it's getting there it's not perfect but it's broken down all the different skills and concepts that we need as pianists, as musicians, um, and then it helps us to build up a picture of our students individually and know how to, you know, follow them through. So, as I said earlier, uh, I'd been working on syncopation, dotted crotchets and quavers with some of my students because they're at that right level in the, in the piano framework. And the other really exciting thing that we've been working on recently, and there's going to be a curiosity box, I think, in April, something like that, mm -hmm. on this, yeah. is something called the teacher framework. And um, this, I think, is, is, abs is going to be a, a game changer, actually, really do, for piano teachers, because um, we're saying, talking about the four pillars of piano teaching, which is being a pianist yourself, being a teacher, being a musician, and then being a business owner. And it's all these different strands that make us into really uh, wonderful piano teachers who reflect and love what they do. So that 
these two different frameworks, along with all the resources, really, really help teachers, don't they, Sharon, to, to gain confidence in, in their teaching so that they can actually say to parents, actually, this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, the parents then, it, it just gives teachers such authority, I find. It does. It does. You've got, I, I remember someone once calling it um, a, a sat nav. <laughs> Yeah. That sense of, of, of having direction and knowing. It's even, I think, for, for teachers, um, and one of the things that I think is so exciting about the teaching framework is sometimes you don't know what you don't know. No. No. And no, it's, it's until you actually get these things. It's almost like um, you don't know what to be curious about because it's kind of an, a, a, whole, a whole realm we just haven't yet discovered. So, uh, and you know, obviously Sally and I are, are still are still discovering and still learning but it's it's this idea of sharing it and passing on and still getting things wrong oh, absolutely <laughs> quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> but learning from them hopefully that's right yes. and we do we don't we we learn as much as we teach in in this in this community and in this job we're always yeah. learning i think that's yeah. that's the, that's the good thing about it you know, it, it, if, it makes us quite yeah. unique i think yeah i think one of the one of the big things that really changed teaching for me was becoming a reflective practitioner mm. and whereas before things didn't work i didn't have the strategies i didn't know what to do i didn't know where to go next and just brushing problems under the carpet, as it were. But when I developed as a reflective practitioner, I remember um, you know, the, the course I was doing at the time was, was giving that, me that permission to actually, you know, it's like, it's fine to fall flat on your face with it, but let's dig into it. What happened? Why did it happen? What can we do? What, where can we go to find out how to improve this? And that really gave me a wonderful license, um, just just to to not be as afraid of getting something. It's like oh, because I felt before I could never should never be wrong because I was a teacher. So it's just having this, um, and I'm going to just plug my computer in. It's warning me that it's going to die. So. <laughs> That's not what we want, Sharon, uh, while, at all. while Sharon's doing that, I mean, I, I just want to share with you. I mean, there, there is so much if you kind of haven't, if you haven't been around the Curious Piano Teachers for very long, but there is so much available to us. There is just, there's an absolute wealth of resources, ready to use, how to videos. Um, there's the, what we what we'd call it is a curiosity box and it's released every month and it's on a different aspect of um, piano teaching. So within, and this is in the members only area of the website. So what you get, if you subscribe, you'll be able to have access to all of these materials. Um, there are how to videos, there are activities and worksheets, eBooks and podcasts, and you've got access to some of the, the top experts in their field in piano teaching, you know, just delivering these videos that will help you in your day-to-day -day teaching. And there's so much there. And I say there, there are um, over 50, I think, if that's right, is that, that's right, Sharon? So. Lots and right. lots of different, lots and lots of different um, mm -hmm. kind of topics. You know, pretty much anything that you could think that you may need help with, it's there. And I know that I dip into things as a, a working piano teacher um, myself. Every every week, there's something I think. Hang on a minute, I've seen that. I can use that. You know, last last week it was going back to some of your lessons for first beginners. Um, some had some new first beginners, and thought I'd try something different with them, and it's there. So anything you could wish for, pretty much, is is there. So I think we're going to very shortly go back to our flashcard things, but I think Sharon, you've got another screen that will show the the range of um, topics that we we've covered up till now, and there's more to come. We've just been planning this year's, which is really exciting. And um, is it going to come? It's taking its time. There, there we go. Over yeah. fifty curiosity boxes. Yeah. So whether you're an advanced teacher whether you've been teaching and got lots of experience um, and uh, or whether you're absolutely new to teaching you know th there is something there for practically everybody whether you're teaching just beginners and elementary pupils or whether you're teaching advanced level students there is something there for everybody so for example if you were teaching that Beethoven sonata I was just talking about we have a whole curiosity box on um, sonata 
on Sonata form and it has lots of resources so that students and I'm going to be doing this this afternoon actually with a with an adult who is who is learning her first sonatina and looking at you know the structure of it and uh, using some of the resources to show her where the exposition is and the change of keys and stuff like that so um, plenty for everybody there Sharon yeah there really is uh, and this is just this is just one example um, this is one that I've personally enjoyed so much because of course Sally and I don't just create these we get uh, we have we have guest presenters um, this was one that we did earlier on back in 2019 uh, about how you educate your piano parents and there were an amazing absolutely amazing array of insights and tips from Dr. Dr. Christopher Fisher there who is um, based at the University of Ohio and then of course we got busy we created uh, home practice cards for piano parents so these are actually resources that you can give your piano parents and uh, there was an ebook as well so it's um, there's there's lots of depth there's lots of insight and um, and we are having a brand new website in a minute which is going to have um, uh, a search facility which is going to make everything um, even more streamlined um, and these are just a few things that our members are, are saying that the fact that the courses try your lessons today so it's it's just instant you get to try it out in lessons um, so it's a really really simple process it's um, a case of joining you get access and then you get to use and explore lots of different ideas in your teaching, um, develop your own teaching skills. And I think for me, what's most powerful is that because I had very, very humble beginnings as a piano teacher, incredibly humble. Um, we were talking about rhythms earlier. That was a really big pain point for me. Um, and once you find out, I mean, solutions are always there. For every problem, there is a solution. And the idea is that we are giving teachers these solutions and suddenly then we are getting students who are incredibly more successful. And it just, I remember it in my, um, when I developed my, my ability to, to reflect as a teacher, I did increasingly then. Um, I had students who, you know, they became confident, I became more confident and it just becomes a much happier place which for me that was really a big difference and it's been a very very long journey since then but a completely wonderful one um we've got a so, special offer haven't we on this we certainly do. For, for the for this actual webinar <coughs> we certainly do we do hannah i'm gonna hand over to you for this okay so our yearly subscription would normally cost 247 pounds um but we've got a special um deal for you today with 50 pounds off that price so you can join today until midnight tomorrow midnight gmt on tuesday the 21st of january you're able to join up for the price of 197 pounds and so um, for that one off fee, you will get access to all of those things that you've said. You'll get access to the members only Curiosity Lounge. Um, uh, there's also a 30 day money back guarantee. So there really is nothing to lose if you aren't sure whether to give it a try or not. Um, if you're not happy for any reason, you can cancel your membership within the first month. Um, but we really hope you won't want to and that once you've seen what's on offer that you'll be enjoying it and that you want to stay with us. Um, there is a monthly option, but it, it will cost a fair amount more. So Sharon, would you like to say anything else about that? I, I would yeah. just like to say something that oh, the um, in dollars that yearly subscription of £197 is about $256 according to the actual exchange rate okay so it's about 256 dollars for a year's membership if you're watching from america and we do have quite a few american members and australian members and uh, canadian members we are truly global and international membership and community right i think it's time to get back to our rhythm flashcards i'm going to hide <laughs> the video i'm going to let you both go on to it oh thank you sarah Sarah's saying joining this curious group has been one of the best decisions I have made. <laughs> right on, Sarah. Okay, well, Sharon. Sharon. Okay. Um, so, 
So here is another idea for using rhythm flashcards in a really productive, um, in a really productive and purposeful way. So um, let's say that there is um, you are teaching a particular piece with this type of a rhythm. Um, you will then show the flashcard to the student at the beginning of the lesson. And then the aim is for the student to be on the aware the whole lesson for every single occurrence of this. So it might be when they see it in, in, their, in their repertoire, you'd be then giving them a particular piece of sight reading where this again is a feature rhythm in terms of oral work. Um, maybe you're getting them to sing a song having to spot how many times did you hear that particular rhythm so because of course rhythm I think sometimes we can think it's it's all quite it's what we see but we also need to make sure that if a student was to hear a rhythm that they could and that's what I was saying earlier on about dictation why this stick notation is so handy because they're not having to draw the blobs they just get so you know if we have a rhythm getting them to write it back down. It's like, do, do they understand from listening to it what it looks like and they can translate it that way. So that is the idea for spot the rhythm. But of course, remember, it means that we are planning the lesson in a particular way. We are not just randomly teaching repertoire where all of these things come up ad hoc and just happen to be. We're actually being very, very purposeful about the particular rhythm concepts in this case that we're teaching and that we follow it through and that you know they are seeing them um, that they're reading them that they're hearing them that when they can hear them they can write it back down again Sally. yeah yeah um and i i, I do like this i that idea of, of can they spot it during the lesson i'm i'm going to try that not today but another day so I'm going to move on now to the... And actually, the other thing I, I've got to say, the one thing I did forget to say was, of course, then you can record how many times. So like, yes. you know, every recognition is a point and points can mean prizes. <laughs> of course I mean prizes, Sharon. Of course so. I do. <laughs> so on to number six with um, flashcard game number six. And... Um, this is to take four flashcards and uh, to get the student, and again, these are flashcards that they're familiar with already, to get them to count and clap the rhythm. So that's the first part of it. The first thing I would do is give them the four flashcards and get them to organise them in an order that they like, or in an order. Anyhow, we put them out on the piano like that. And then I would get them to count and to clap the rhythm. Depending on what level they're at, they'd either use rhythm language. So for me, that is always the ta and the tt. Um, or if they're into metrical counting, I get them to count the rhythm aloud. Now, you might just ask yourself, how much counting aloud do I get my students to do? Because Sharon and I both know that we watch an awful lot of other tt teach the piano and the number of times the student doesn't count aloud well it's quite a lot let's just say that so of course what happens if the teacher does all the work for the student and counts in the lesson can the student do that is the student going to do that when they go home and have to do their practice no no they're not going to count aloud if they haven't already tried that in the lesson so what is the state of that rhythm the next week they still can't do it okay and you think oh i've taught that already so then that's how frustration builds up so it's passing over the learning to the student the student is the one who has to do the work they have to count aloud so the student i'm going to pretend they're you know quite a beginner actually and we're, we're not on to petrol counting and so they might count and i would always count them in i have to frame the beat for them like i'm a conductor they have to do it eventually off you go Ta 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 ti ti ta 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 ti 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 ta yeah doing that maybe um at least a couple of times i might say to shin are you happy with the order and they might rearrange it they might decide they want to put the rest at the end and then doing that again like that 
So making sure they know those rhythms really, really well and securely. And then we might put the rhythms onto the piano. And I might then just set up a little uh, improvisation. I don't know, something like that. And I might say to the student on any black note, can you tap one of the rhythms? And hopefully they might go. And I would copy. Can you do another one? And again, I would probably copy that back. So I'm, improvisation isn't a big scary thing if you actually fix it down to a very, uh, uh, you can be free as long as you've got something really fixed to be free around. So my fixedness is my rhythm cards. And also using the black keys because it, it, it's less bamboozling for a beginner. Um, and then I'm keeping the flow of the music going just by doing something like this. For more inspiration on that, you need to go and have a look at Forrest Kinney's work if you haven't already. And particularly his uh, Create First book which you can buy online as PDFs and he has lots of ideas for teachers to get you started with very simple ingredients for improvisation and then you can use flashcards actually to feed into that improvisation so making sure that they know the rhythm first tapping it and then just doing some very simple improvisation or more complicated improvisation if you've got more advanced students you can do exactly the same Right, Sharon, we're on to the very last one, aren't we? Number seven. We are indeed. Okay, so number seven is scale rhythms. And of course, it's scales is something we are always getting our students to do. But how often do we actually get them to play in a particular rhythm? And this is another way that we can use these flashcards. Uh, it can really challenge the fingering. So if you've ever tried it before, um, I'd love you to just stick uh, a comment in, in the chat. But if one of the first things that will happen is they will, they will then, but like Sally said earlier on, you know, their brain gets kind of chock full with the, <gasps> okay. Um, and, the one other thing I will say is that sometimes, like I have seen before, I remember being in a lesson and someone was getting them to play the scale, um, C major or something, whatever it was, and they were to play it in the rhythm of happy birthday. But they were really, really struggling. And it was probably because when we know happy birthday, we also knew it as the melody. Mm. So, Sometimes, I mean, if I'm even not just using uh, rhythm flashcards, another idea is just nursery rhymes, but nursery rhymes that are more using our speaking voice. You know, so for example, I know Humpty Dumpty, um, there is a melodic version, but I more know it as just speaking voice, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. And now that's another idea, or even just a repeated um, sentence or phrase that you can get a student to say with them if or indeed using flashcards. Now I have, you can see my room is so bright. I have, um, I'm in Ireland, as, as a lot of you probably know, and it's blue skies and the sun is shining. So this is why normally I have my, <laughs> normally I have my, uh, my computer in a completely different place in the room, but it was just too bright. So uh, I am going to, I don't know how clearly this will sound, but I'm going to play a scale in a rhythm. And I'd like you to see if you can identify what the rhythm is. Okay, so it's one bar and it's in four, four. Here we go. And 
so sure if that went underwater or not. How easy it did, was that? It did, go, it did go a little underwater, I must admit, especially the start. It did settle down eventually. Did it? So any ideas of what the rhythm was? Me or other people? I was thinking, oh, well, I was, guess I was throwing it out. I'm not seeing any comments coming in. Sorry. Well, it was, oh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm doing it completely wrong. I hadn't really, it was it supposed to be a melody, was it? No, no, it was just, it was just a, there's me not explaining it probably, no, it was just a, it was a one bar rhythm in 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, so you've got lots of, lots of ideas coming in now. So what we've got is... Paul MacDonald, Humpty Dumpty, Tai Ti Ta Ta, yeah, that's what, yeah. Okay. I mean, there's another activity that you could do is you play it within a repeat pattern and get the student to pick a particular flashcard. You know, what card, uh, what rhythm did you hear there? So again, it goes back to their, to their listening skills. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Yes, I'm sorry. It was probably a little bit, a little bit hard to hear because I know when we play on these webinars, it's, <laughs> it's not well as clear as for everybody that, 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 that got that one. Um, it's it almost because the, I think the sound disappeared at the beginning. It almost sounded like it was an anacrusis rhythm, <laughs> and it was difficult to hear where the first beat of the bar was. Oh, but it was yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, and again, you know, this can this can go all the way up to advanced levels. So instead of just put, you know rattling up and down the scales, you can play a scale in a particular rhythm. You can link it to the piece. I mean, back to my. Um, uh, back to the Beethoven that I was playing. I, it, a lot of the Beethoven is quavers, I have to say. Um, and I can't see any dotted rhythms anywhere. No, it's all quavers, basically. <laughs> so you could play, you know, um, just a, uh, a bar of quavers followed by a bar of crotchets in the key. So it'd be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. And as Sharon says, it really does mess up fingering and it shows how uh, it, it integrated the fingering is and, um, you know, that it can be done. The other thing I like that you, were, that you were doing, Sally, was counting aloud. Mm -hmm. And I, I keep coming back to that because it's something that years ago I never got my students to do. In fact, I wasn't even totally away with it myself because mm -hmm. um, that was one of, as I've already said, one of my really big pain points. Um, but definitely getting our students kind of loud, you will soon know what they know and where the shaky areas are. Yeah. Another idea actually for that, Sally, is to do, uh, let's say, right hand um, in quavers and the left hand playing crotchets. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really nice idea as well. Sharon seems to have thrown, oh, there she goes, she's moving again. Um, but the, the thing is, yeah, Melissa's saying if kids are shy to speak out loud, because quite a few of them are actually, it's quite interesting. You do <laughs> have to encourage them and um, to, to actually say, say it. It's so easy just to do it yourself, yeah? So I'll say, we'll, we'll do it together, shall we? Okay, I'll count in, ready? Off we go, and then off we go, and then, oh, oh, I seem to be doing a Sally solo. I look aghast, you know. I think I'll just count you in and you take over. You'll be much better than me. <laughs> yeah. So be as playful as you possibly can, I think, with, with, yeah. with encouraging. Yeah. I do like the idea of the funny voice changer though, doing it like Darth Vader. I think that's brilliant. I think, <laughs> I think I'm sure that you could, can you down, you must be able to download one of those for an iPad to change, yeah, yeah, change yeah. their voice. <laughs> funny. And yeah. I love that idea there, Melissa. Yeah. Love that. And I think the other thing that's, that's worth saying is that we, obviously in the first instance that we demonstrated so that they know what musical counting sounds like. And sometimes I will say, I do not talk like a robot. I do not talk like this. And it's to give them that idea that they're not going to, we're not wanting them to count one and two and three and four. There's got to be that sense um, of meter one and two 
Absolutely. And it really does make all the difference. So, but that's us, up to us as teachers. So that they're actually, what they're doing is that they're, they're doing it musically. Well, thank you both very much. That's been amazing. There's certainly lots of practical ideas that I can use in my teaching. And I love the fact that people are pitching in as well and sharing mm. their ideas. And mm. that is what we are about. That's what the lounge is all about. Um, there was Louise Sherritt who says a flashcard game that's worked well for her is to have four cards on the table, tap out a rhythm using each of the cards in a random order. And the pupil has to arrange the cards yep. in the right order. Yep. So she repeats the rhythm as many times as they need, but she notes down how many times they need and then they try and reduce it over time that's a great idea so th i mean this yeah. is this is the strength of this Absolutely. community in that people kind of take the ideas adapt them use them themselves share them and it, it's it's just so helpful so if you do want to find out more i've posted the join up link back in the chat there but it's just um www.thecuriouspianoteachers.org forward slash join um, and if you do join up for the first time, as we said before um, midnight, um, Tuesday, the 21st of January, that's GMT, um, then you can you can claim an exclusive £50 off the yearly price just for this period, just for this um, this period. So and there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're in America, that would be um, seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I think it's probably 4 p.m um pacific time yeah some something like that but do double check for yourselves don't take my word for it <laughs> <laughs> okay well it's lovely to have everybody um ladies is there anything else you'd like to say in closing it, it's been really good actually for us to to put these ideas together and actually we've got 21 of them all in, we do. I was in, in, <laughs> in the um in the curiosity box and so this is just a little snapshot of of seven of them and we've had a lot of fun doing them and certainly i think certainly my teaching last week and this week is benefiting benefiting from this emphasis on rhythm and i should be doing continuing to do more of it so um you know do do make sure that rhythm is at the heart of your teaching certainly going forward from here sharon I'm just going to answer a quick question. Katie's saying, where did I buy the coloured plates? These are from Boots, as in Boots Chemist, the BB end. Um, but you can even paper plates, anything is a, is a really simple. Um, or coasters is another thing that I know some teachers have used, so you can get creative. Okay, Lovely. wonderful. Thank you all so, so much for joining us. Um, it has been, it, I mean, Sally and I absolutely love doing these. It's just lovely to connect. It's been lovely to have had so many of you on the live call. Mm -hmm. um, so that means you've taken all of your time today to be with us. So a massive, thank massive huge thank you for that. Lovely. And it's been really, really nice as well to have some um, of our members who've joined fairly recently. So um, I just want to give out um, a couple of shout outs if you're still here. I know I think Sarah's had to go, um, but um, Melissa Horn said this is her first time joining us today. Um, Christy Alfredson from Houston in Texas is your first time with us today. So it's been lovely to have you. Thank you for your questions. Um, Fiona Cockling's first time. Lynette Farkas joined us recently, I think possibly from the conference. Um, and Katie as well, Katie Bachelor. So um, really, really nice um, to have you on for the first time. And we hope you're going to enjoy many more of these um, in the future. So lovely. Any, well, thank any you, further? Hannah. Nope. Oh, lovely. Yep. Great. <laughs> um, shall I um, just finish up here then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Because I think we've all got to go. I've certainly got to go yeah. and do my teaching. So I think we'll just finish by saying happy teaching yeah. wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye for now. All right, bye for bye. now. Bye for now.